Hello everyone. I thought maybe we'd take a moment to talk about roads. That's right, the mystical, magical, flat thing that apparently only government can make. Or at least provide for. See, if you haven't heard the argument already, uh, most anarchists have to deal with the what about roads argument that statists usually toss at us in one of their many last-ditch attempts to uh, say, well, you're wrong because we need government. Who's going to make the roads? Well, right now who makes the roads? Let me fill you in. Right now who makes the roads is uh, their private contracted companies. Yes, the government pays them the money, but the, you, you don't have senators and congressmen going out and making I-80, you know, or uh, <laughs> your local streets. That just doesn't happen. So your question really is who's going to pay for the roads, which that's pretty easy um, because right now, let me ask you, do you know who pays for the roads? I'll make it easy for you. Right now, what's supposed to pay for all the roads in the United States, when you go to the gas pump and you see the price and it says two dollars and ten cents or whatever wherever it is at, at your time in your area you notice there's a little nine that little nine is a tax that tax is meant to go towards all the roads now now that you know who what pays for the roads um let's talk about who needs the roads yeah you and me need the roads to go to work to go get groceries to go see family for the holidays, everything that we do when we travel, we need roads. Very true. For right now, that's the case. But, let's say there's no government. We've abolished that. Now what? Well, we've got all these roads, and yeah, they're okay for right now, but what happens when they get dilapidated and fall apart and there's potholes everywhere? How do we solve this problem? Well, the companies that previously paved the roads. They didn't disappear. They still exist. So, you may be saying to yourself, yeah, but we still have to pay them. What? What? So am I going to go to them and say, hey, can you build the roads? Myself? By myself? <laughs> no, you're not. You don't, you're probably not going to have to individually go and be like, all right, here's my annual uh, contribution to roads because I like them. And I actually don't even think it would all become toll roads either. That's a possibility, but I don't think that would be the case. Let me tell you what I think um, is reasonable, logical, and actually better. Even better than right now. In, in fact, we could go to this, what I'm about to say, without even abolishing government, and it would be better for everybody. So right now, the gasoline tax is supposedly what pays for the roads. But let's say you took away the tax. Then what happens? So what do we do? Well, right now, that issue would be uh, most pertinent to gasoline oil company, that business. Reason being, do they exist without roads? Well, they certainly don't exist without cars. Right now, well over the majority of cars are gasoline powered. Or diesel. I mean, it's the same. Oil. Oil is... They need it. They need fossil fuel. So, if that's the case, and you got rid of the tax, well, someone's going to have to keep building these roads. Hear me out. If the gasoline uh, companies kept that little nine... And instead of going, wait, 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 guys, if we kept this little nine and we didn't have to pay it to the government, correct me if I'm wrong here, but then we could pay, this is the gas companies talking, then we could pay uh, for these roads to be built. Hold up, hold up. This is how a capitalist thinks, right? They go, okay, okay, okay. So we would pay for these roads to be built. We've got that little nine and all it accrues in um, wealth. But right now, we know that the government overpays like crazy for things. I don't know if you've seen some of the bills 
But you can look up overpaying for items that the government does. I mean, we're talking pencils. $7 for one pencil. $45 for a muffin for a conference. And, and they pay in bulk all at the same time for these things. So it's a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, I just heard today that Donald Trump was saying to uh, not pay for the new um, Air Force One jets because they were way overpriced. Way overpriced. Now here's a guy who has his own private jets. He has some experience in it, and he's saying, this is not a good price. This is terrible. And I'm not saying he's the end-all, be-all of uh, whether or not it was a good price. However, I do know that the government does overpay for a lot of things. This is common knowledge. If it isn't knowledge for you, please do a little bit of, a little bit of research, and you'll find out, wow, they pay way too much for everything. And back to being the gasoline company, capitalist saying, we get to keep the little nine. What do we do with this money? Well, we can't not have roads, because if there aren't roads, we're selling gasoline to people who can't even friggin' drive on anything. So it is beneficial to us, but here's an opportunity for them to make more money. You might be saying, well, they're talking about giving that money away that they were gonna give to the government to pay for roads. How are they gonna make any money? Because the nature of capitalism is competition. Lower price, better quality results. That's what they want. So, what would they do? Well, for one, they wouldn't uh, accept way overpriced uh, roads. At the same time, they obviously wouldn't want to, they wouldn't want to pay for garbage roads either, because here's the other thing, right? If you give this over to capitalism, a free market, not state capitalism, but if you give it over to a free market, It'll be like kind of like this. Oh, say BP builds the roads in these few counties over here, and over here Chevron builds the roads in these few counties, right? And they compete. We should have the better roads. They'll buy our gas. Well, we want the better ones, so they'll buy our gas. Um, and they could even have little signs on the roads. This road's sponsored by uh, BP or something, right? And you might notice, I don't know about you, but if you've driven across country, um, like a lot across country, when I moved from Las Vegas to Ohio, I noticed from New Mexico to Texas, the roads instantly were better in Texas. Going to Texas from New Mexico is like this. I was like, oh my God, they pay for really great roads here. It's amazing. It is a possibility to have better roads, better quality. I don't know that Texas is like overtaxing because to tell you the truth, throughout the nation, I've never seen anything more than the little nine. So it's the same price that they're taxing all the gas companies throughout the entire country, yet some states seem to have found a better way to make roads. Not the states, but they found a better company to make the roads. What I'm saying is R&D, research and development, with the right funding and not overpricing it, competition, they'll win out. We got the better price. We got the better roads. The gas companies are going to want to come to us. Not only in doing this do you create better roads at a cheaper price, the gas companies are going to be incentivized to do this because if they can, if they can weed out the better company for the better price, they'll actually get to... That little nine, they'll keep charging it, and they'll keep some of it. They'll skim some of it off the top. That's their incentive to do this, is they'll actually make money off that little nine. Not a lot, but enough to be like, hey, it's more money than we had before, and it comes in just like before. And nobody that's buying gas is going to care because they always pay that little nine. Now there's no government, and we keep the little nine, and we say, we'll take care of the roads for you. And everyone's like, oh, that wasn't so hard of a transition because it already paid for it anyways. It's just now the gas companies are going to be the ones determining who gets the contracts to make the roads. So if they get a contract that's less price, better quality roads, then they'll go for that because they can put their signs up on, the, on their road that says this road sponsored by, and when you're driving on it, you're going to go, this is awesome. This is the, this is the road. This is the nice road. It's so quiet. I can actually hear myself think instead of having to hit all these potholes or whatever. So point being, the competition alone solves a lot of problems. 
right there I just said, you don't need government to do it. Uh, did I prove it? Uh, it? Obviously, this is speculation. But it's based off of how free market economics works. Uh, there's really no reason to believe otherwise. I mean, it's not going to be, you wouldn't think it would be like, well, BP or, and I don't mean to keep using BP. That's the one that came off the top of my head. It could be Shell. It could be any of them. It could be mom and pop, Firestar or Starfire or whatever. There's a local gas station around here that has a name I've never heard of before. It could be them. They could be the ones that build the roads in the local area. And they could be the And they might win out. Who knows? It could be a whole new business venture for them that could actually build a, a smaller company into a bigger one just because they they get known, oh, wow, not only do they have good gas, obviously the gas is this, pretty much the same everywhere, but they might be known as these guys actually cared about building the better roads. So, yeah, 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 no, you guys need to expand. This was great. We thought you did a good job, and we want to give you our money. That's the way free market capitalism works. I'm not going to get into the difference between free market and state capitalism. Right there, you have an example of how you've got a non-violent, non-coercive, and non-government way to build roads. Now, you might say, well, what about when electric cars come out? What about when, you know, we don't use fossil fuels for that so much? That's fine. But what you need to be thinking of is... Who needs these roads? And I don't mean who uses them. Everybody uses them. But who needs them? Because if they don't have them, their business is dead. Truth is, just about... You know all those semis you see? They need those roads. Or business is dead. So, even in the case that the gasoline companies, if they start diminishing in business because people start converting to something else, doesn't matter because there's plenty of businesses that need roads to survive and they they all pay taxes right so here's the other caveat is they all pay taxes there's no government they don't pay any taxes so they've got extra money all of the sudden isn't that great so they get to keep their business going so anyways rebut in the comments, um, tell me I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> Whatever you want. I think that's a logical sound um, argument for why roads could still exist without a state. That's how roads started. I don't know if you knew this, but roads did not start because the government said, we need these things. No, it didn't start that way. It started because businesses were like, you know, if we had a smoother, more reliable way to get to each other and do business... Uh, we wouldn't have to spend so much money on repairs for our carts and buggies. And I think at the time they actually had cars, but they were brand new. So they were like, it actually would be better for our cars because they don't, they don't drive very fast as it is. And if we had something flat and smooth, it would be at least that much easier to drive across. So let's invest in ourselves and build something that's going to improve both of our lives. And so they did. That's how roads started. Aside from paths and aside from, you know, Roman cobblestone roads. I'm not talking about that. Anyways, hopefully this video provided you with another perspective to think outside the box. To think, you know what, maybe government isn't all it's meant out to be. Maybe it's not all that great. Maybe we can do stuff ourselves. I'm not trying to tell you how to think. I'm just trying to get you to realize there's, there's options. There's other things out there. There, you don't have to fit in this little box that the government wants you to fit into. Because everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's needs are different. Government doesn't always have the answer. And even when government purports to have the answer, guess what they do? They overpay like crazy. So, anyways, that wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll catch you later.